Well, hey everyone, Hudson here. And today I'm gonna to take you inside one of the more complicated things that I do as a photographer, and that's figuring out what gear is gonna make the cut for a big international trip. By the time you watch this video, I'll be in Michoacan, Mexico, with a really cool group of workshop participants, mostly repeat workshop participants, who are going to photograph Dia de Muertos with me. I don't know if you saw the Pixar movie Coco that won Best Animated Feature at the Oscars last year, but it depicts Dia de Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Uh, it's an amazing celebration. Uh, lots of candlelit processions and beautiful ornate altars sort of celebrating lost family members and it's a time for families down in Mexico to reconnect with those ancestors that are lost uh, and it's a really beautiful beautiful thing so I'm going to be kind of picking out a lightweight kit to move around handheld at the same time we're going to have really really wonderful landscape shooting opportunities where we're staying uh, right on the edge of this beautiful national park filled with waterfalls and cloud forest and we're going to go out to a volcano uh, that inundated a town it's going to be a bunch of tricky choices what do i bring what do i not bring uh, and i'll take you inside that in this particular video so this is Approaching the Scene. It's a series of weekly videos that I put out every Thursday about everything photographic, from gear to technology to the art of making photographs and the people that I work with to do that. Uh, I'd love for you to join that conversation. It's easy to send me a question at questions at HudsonHenry.com. You can also log on to my website at www.HudsonHenry.com ATS and leave me a question there. If you're enjoying this series, please click like, please click subscribe, share it with your friends. And with that, let's get packing. So I'm packing for this trip to Michoacan, you know, I'm, I'm sort of set at the very beginning. I'm going a little heavy for an international trip because I need to travel with my projector and my laptop, uh, a bunch of hard drives and everything I need to teach, you know, the classroom sessions. I'm be teaching it in an old Fabrica in, or WAP in Michoacan. Um, and, you know, the, the other thing that's interesting about the trip is that there's going to be a lot of it where I'm actually out with the workshop students uh, walking through these interesting ceremonies, a lot of low light photography at candlelight uh, with these shrines that the, the people down there make to their ancestors, to their lost ancestors covered in marigold blossoms and lots of candlelight and people dressed to the hilt. Uh, but it's low light, it's moving through crowds, it's working street scenes, uh, and, and not really wanting to carry a big heavy camera rig. So there's gonna be some landscape photography trips uh, to the volcano, to, to um, this beautiful rainforest filled with waterfalls. But at the same time, you know, I wanna essentially really pack for those night shoots and for walking around and street shooting and being a little more lightweight. So that whole thing has to go into what I'm choosing to take, what I'm not choosing to take. And I've actually chosen uh, to take only one zoom lens for my big Nikon system on this trip. So I'm only gonna take my 70 to 200. Uh, I've got the newest Nikon 70 to 200 2.8, the, uh, the FLED. Absolutely love this lens. And there's just situations where you know, you, you've got just a little bit of beautiful light or a section of the sky that's gorgeous, but the rest is bland and you want to do a little bit of an extractive landscape or you've got a portrait subject, a little bit of a distance and you just want that range to zoom between 70 and 200. And I find it really, really hard when I don't have this lens in those kinds of situations. Otherwise, I'm carrying light, fast primes. Uh, the main camera I'm going to take, you know, the, the big decision for me is do I take my Nikon D850 and my D500 like normal? My, normally I, I shoot everything with the D850 and the D500 is kind of a backup camera and I like to use it with longer lenses because it gives those longer lenses a little bit more reach. Um, in this case, I'm gonna take the D850. I'm actually filming this with the D850. It's my favorite uh, camera for video that I own right now. Uh, as I wait for the Nikon Z6 to come out next month and, and I should get one of the first ones of those released. Uh, so I've got the D810 sitting here. It's not actually going with me, but it's standing in for the D850 that I'm shooting this with. And I'm gonna take uh, a Really Right Stuff Breathe hybrid strap. Um, I really like photographing with, with this strap when I'm, when I'm wanting to kind of do a little bit longer exposure. It's got a nice kind of flip under the shoulder snap here that can actually switch and it can be a second camera. You can actually hang a second camera under, under your shoulder there. 
but you know you can sling up like this. One of the nice things about these sling straps, whether you use Black Rapid or another brand, Black Rapids are my favorite, but you can come up and kind of brace by just pushing against the strap. It pulls it into your torso from behind and you're able to kind of stabilize. It gives you a little bit more stability as if you were braced. So you can kind of brace with the strap. That's one thing I really, really like about having a sling strap for shooting in low light, handheld night scenes. Um, so I'm gonna be taking the D850. I'm gonna be taking a series of 1.8 primes. I really like how light they are, how affordable they are, and what really, really high quality uh, images I've been getting out of them. So I've got the 51.8 that's mounted right here. And I'm gonna also take the 21.8 which is a really nice landscape lens, and I find it throws a spectacular sun star if you stop it down to f16. Um, I'm actually gonna leave behind my, my favorite kind of beloved uh, 14 to 24, just because it's big, it's heavy, and at a 2.8, it doesn't bring in as much light as the 20 millimeter 1.8. So if I wanna do some landscape work and I don't have quite wide enough with 1.8, I'm gonna be able to do some panoramas. I'll show you that in a second. So I'm taking the 51.8, the 21.8, and I have this 105 sitting here. It's a big old heavy macro 2.8. That's actually just sort of standing in. I was thinking about taking it, uh, but I actually ordered the, the Nikon 85 1.8, the one of these, one of the, the, the group of this lenses. It's lighter. It lets in a bit more light. Uh, it's a wonderful portrait lens, and it'll be nice for, for doing tight shots of people uh, during the, the Dia de, de Muertos. So, so I'm going to, you know, that sort of stands in for that. So leaving behind in the Nikon world the 14 to 24 that I love to take with me on trips like this, it's just big, it's heavy, and it's not going to be that useful running around town. And with the 20 millimeter, I can either move my feet a little bit or use a pano technique to get a wider scene. I'm leaving behind my 300 F4, which is so small, so light, that generally I love to take it in case I encounter wildlife. But instead, I'm taking that 70 to 200 uh, 2.8, a little faster lens if I want to use it in a darker condition. And it, it just gives me that 70 to 200 reach. And with this 1.4 teleconverter that I'm taking, it gets me almost to 300, it gets me to about 280. The other thing about leaving my D500, you know, it has a faster frame rate um, and it gets you a little bit more reach with longer lenses, but that's kind of negated by the amount of resolution that the D850 gives me because I can use the crop mode in the D850 and get just about the same 20 megapixels. This is 21 megapixels I'll get just about the same amount of resolution, just a tiny bit less and a faster frame rate if I use the crop mode. If I wind up finding some interesting sports thing to shoot or wildlife, I can always crop and get that extra reach out of my lens. So that's always a consideration. And that's really the whole kit that I'm taking as far as my big DSLR main system. I'm not taking a backup to it. The D850 has been an amazing camera. It's relatively new and I haven't had problems with the Nikon DSLR for a really long time. Plus, you know, my primary function on this trip is gonna be teaching the workshop, not so much getting my own images. I'm excited to get my own images, but uh, if everyone else has a wonderful time and gets beautiful images of, on this trip, then I'm happy as can be. Uh, obviously, I'm taking a bunch of spare batteries. I'll take five spare batteries just in case something goes wrong in a charger. I've got both XQD cards and SD cards for the 850. Um, I've got this cool little Pluto trigger, which is a, a remote trigger. Let's use your phone to trigger the camera. Uh, you just plug this into it and dial this into the 10 pin port on the, on the D850. My good friend David gave this to me after the Mount Rainier workshop when he realized I didn't have one. The other nice thing about this trigger, well, a couple cool things about it. You can actually set really long exposures, so you could have like a five minute exposure and have your phone counted down and trigger the camera and not do that just bulb mode uh, and count. You still put your camera in bulb mode, but this will trigger and shut down your shutter uh, just based on what you dial in on your cell phone. Really pretty nice. The other thing is it has a built-in lightning trigger and there's supposed to be thunderstorms there. So if we wind up having cool lightning storms with some interesting landscape, this could work really well as a lightning trigger. Uh, might get some cool lightning photography. As a backup, I've got my trusty cable release. Uh, and of course the D850 has an exposure delay mode where I can just 
tell it to wait, you know, anything between 0.2 seconds and three seconds to take an exposure to lift the mirror, wait that amount of time, open and close the shutter. So um, my backup system, interestingly enough, is kind of switching around. I'm not taking my trusty Sony a6500 uh, and it's 10 millimeter lens and it's uh, 16 to 50 that I normally would take along as, as a backup system and a little video system. Instead, I'm taking this tiny, tiny little uh, Sony RX100 Mark V. My buddy Matt Kleskowski recommended that I use this um, for doing some vlogging. It's nice because it has a little flip-up screen and you can see yourself while you're vlogging. I've been using it a little bit in these approaching the scenes videos and enjoying its quality. So I'm gonna carry that. I've got a little universal L plate if I wanna mount it and I've got Sony's time-lapse app uh, and you can actually plug it into say a cell phone uh, spare battery, you know, a battery brick and it won't lose its battery as fast. You can actually power it right off of a, I've, I've tested it, it powers just fine right off of a, a, a spare battery for the cell phone. And I could do time lapse with it on a second tripod. Now, I always carry this little tabletop tripod with it because I can just mount it right there. And if I want to do some videos while I'm in Michoacan, I can hold it by that. It also sets up nicely as a tabletop tripod. And the whole thing fits really nicely in this tiny little bag. So if I want to run around town super light, I've got that, you know, and I can even put this even smaller little belt case on my belt. Uh, and I've got a nice little mini camera. It's significantly better even than my cell phone, which takes great pictures because I've got a bit of a zoom on it. I've got about a 24 to 70 zoom. So a nice little uh, ultra light way to save some weight. It's significantly less than taking this whole system with me. And I find that the video out of it is just amazing. It does beautiful 4K. So. For the Nikon system, for filters, I'm going to take uh, adapters to, for, to 82 millimeters for all the lenses that I have with me. I have some 77 lenses, some 58s, and some 67 lenses. And I'll have my trusty Hoya HD3 circular polarizer, as well as my Hoya Solus uh, infrared neutral density filters in four, six, and ten stops. In case I want to do some slowing down those waterfalls, maybe making cloud motion blur. I have my advanced panorama rail set up uh, and my, my nodal slider should be the no nodal point slider um, or the no, the no parallax slider. I've got a uh, panning clamp, the base of that whole system. So I've got my whole pano system here. It's not terribly heavy and it lets me do panoramas even in complex situations. I've got a little loom cube in case I want to do any light painting, and I've got a little filter kit for it. Fits nice in this little really right or in this little uh, Black Rapid pouch. But I've got a bunch of diffusers and uh, warming gels in there if I want to manipulate the light. I'm going to be taking my headlamp. I always want to have this. I like the Princeton Tech Viz headlamps. They have a nice red light. If the first button I press is going to be red. Um, if I press it again, it turns off. So its default is red. I actually have to hold the button down to, uh, to get a white light, which is really nice at, at night. You don't actually blow yourself, accidentally blow your own night vision and your friend's night vision. Uh, again, a bunch of cleaning cloths that have been through the wash that I've used recently, but uh, nice and clean in Ziplocs. I've got a rain sleeve. There's supposed to be a chance of thunderstorms, as I said, so you want to be able to get a rain sleeve over your camera and protect it from the rain. A little microfiber towel that uh, Mountain Safety Research makes. You just get them at REI. It's, it's actually like a towel for drying off after swimming ultra tiny, but it's really nice in waterfall situations. Just kind of drape over the camera and it'll absorb a lot of that spray. Um, keep it off the camera. I've got my general cleaning kit, which has everything from wet sensor cleaning tools all the way to that obviously necessary rocket blower and some Zeiss wipes and a gel stick for sensors and a little sensor light to check and see whether my sensor's clean or not. I've got a multi-tool hex wrench uh, that's going to be, you know, everything I might need hex wrench wise. I've got a little uh, syrup motion, panning motion uh, controller that I can put on the underneath 
whatever tripod head I'm using and program with my cell phone to just slowly turn if I'm doing time lapse to get a little motion to my time lapse. It just pans, kind of a cool little tool, easily programmable from a really cool cell phone app. Um, and one thing that's new in my kit for doing workshops is this little Atomos Ninja 5. It's brand new, just came out last month. It's a little five inch, uh, beautiful, ultra high contrast LCD. And it really helps with doing live view focusing and things. But the main reason I'm taking it is when I do demonstrations in the field, it'll let the students around me have a better view of what I'm seeing in the back of my camera instead of all trying to peer at that much smaller screen. And it really is bright and high contrast in the middle of the day. And I've got an old motor drive case for a, a motor drive I have for my D700 that this just fits perfectly and it's nice and padded. And it takes kind of the ubiquitous uh, Sony batteries that video accessories take these days. I've got a little HDMI adapter cable to go to my Nikon D850 from that so that I can just put it on this little mount which mounts in the hot shoe on the D850 and it's just a nice little screen stands up on the top and everybody can see what I'm doing on the camera. As far as supports go, I'm gonna be taking my favorite big tall Gitzo tripod with the Manfrotto 500 AH that, that's you know my tried and true main system. And that's mainly for landscapes and from when we're out in that national park with the waterfalls and things. For running around in the street scenes, I've got this, uh, set of, of legs for my Benro tripod for my ultra light uh, fluid head system, but I'm gonna leave that fluid head behind and take my really ultra light uh, Acrotec ultimate ball head, which just weighs a pound. So this whole system weighs less than, uh, less than four pounds altogether. And it'll be nice to just maybe take along in case we in the workshop wanna do something with the tripod, even when we're traveling light doing street photography. I'm just gonna take this as kind of the one tripod for us all on the side of my small bag. And the nice thing is that both of those tripods will fit in this Enduro tripod bag. I've checked it out, which will fit inside one of my big uh, LL Bean rolling bags. So I can just check those along with some clothes packed around them and stuff and my projector in there. Uh, I'm taking my big F-stop. Uh, this is the Suka bag, one of the biggest I think it's the second biggest bag that they make, but it fits in airport uh, overhead so I can carry it on. Inside I've got the big Pro ICU. They have a kind of a modular system from F-Stop where if you open this back panel, you've got different sized uh, padded containers that fit in here and Velcro in place. I've got their biggest one, the Pro in there, and I think everything's gonna fit just fine. So all of my, uh, all my main camera gear. But for the nights when we're out shooting around town and doing these celebrations, I'm just gonna take my little Patagonia backcountry ski bag. It's nice, it's light, it's got a nice harness and suspension system, carries weight on my, on my waist instead of my back. Uh, but it's small, it's light, I can put a, a couple of layers and a rain jacket in there along with a couple of extra prime lenses and batteries. And I really just plan on going ultra light. Just this tiny little camera and the D850 with those three 1.8 prime lenses, the 20, the 50, and the 85. And I'll just move my feet to get to different compositions. So that's the plan. By the time you watch this, we'll be in Urwapen uh, and in Pascuaro filming the Day of the Dead. And I can't wait to show you some of the images. And I'm so excited about this workshop. It's gonna be a really special one. So hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked the video, hit like, hit subscribe. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have questions as a whole that you'd like me to answer, you can leave them in the comments below. You can go to questions at hudsonhenry.com, shoot me an email, uh, or you can go to the website at www.hudsonhenry.com slash ATS. Uh, these things are, are a joy. I can't wait. I'm gonna produce some stuff uh, while I'm in Michoacan, uh, and uh, I'll see you when I get back.